So everybody, iPadOS 18.4 Beta 1 brought a bunch of big features, but I wanted to do a follow-up video really honing in on each one of these features, like this brand new ambient kind of music player that now is in every single iOS and iPadOS device, as well as some other features that are smaller, more quality of life improvements. So without further ado, let's get right into 18.4, public and regular Beta 1. Let's get into it. Well, all right, everyone, let's start off with Safari. So in Safari, if you guys are aware, and most websites have these security certificates to let the application know that this website is safe to be visited. So in order to get this done, there's a new section in Safari. So you go over here, tap on the top left part of the URL, hit the ellipses, and then go down to where it says connection security details. And then you're going to get all the information on the certificates on a per website basis. Let's you know all the information, when it expires. You can go in and get additional details as well to the amount of certificates that it has and the types of certificates that it was granted and it's eligible for. Just so you're aware that, hey, these websites are good to go and you're able to use them as you see fit. So that'll be the first new addition to 18.4 that was kind of hidden that wasn't really talked about. But now the next one, which I think is actually a bigger deal than most people expect, is going to be in your control center. So if you go into your control center, go down, long press for a little while and go into your edit mode for your control center, which we got with 18.0. We're gonna add control and then here we have four new options. This is gonna be ambient music and you get sleep, chill, productivity, as well as well-being. I already added the well-being as well as a sleep one. So there's a couple things that you need to know about this because we did speak about this in the initial video, but there's a few more options and again, some more inferences that you can take and some more foreshadowing for the future. The first one being that if you long press while you're in edit mode, you need to be in edit mode for this to occur, you now have an option to change the playlist. So if we go in here, each one of the different categories will have different playlist options. So again, this one is going to be the well-being one. So you have pure meditation, spa, beats and breath, pure calm, and you also have the ability to add from your library. So if you do use Apple Music and you have certain playlists, you can then do that here. But then if I go over here to the sleep one, you can see that it's gonna be a little bit different than the options that we had for the well-being one. So we have sleep sounds, bedtime beats, sound bath, piano sleep, and then as well as from library. So these are different options and different kind of genres that you can decide on when using the ambient sound. So now that we're understanding what's going on from a back end, if we click on one of them, it'll automatically start playing music. If you go up here, you'll see that it does populate in your little now playing tab. You can go into it, you can get some more information on it, and then you get this kind of application view, very similar to Apple Music, but this is going to be the only page of this application. And this is its own dedicated application technically, because if you go into multitasking, you see that it says ambient music right here, meaning that it's its own application. But outside of this page, there's nothing else you can do. Yeah, you can scrub along the timeline here, you can pause it, and you can also scrub on the volume as well as airplay from here, but that's pretty much it when it comes to ambient music. And I can see this kind of foreshadowing to some sort of home pad type of hardware that you put in your kitchen or in your living room. It's kind of a way to set ambient sounds and I can see ambient music being like a dedicated application for you know home pad OS or some what other moniker they put with it. The next one is gonna be with Image Playground. So leave a comment down below if you guys have used Image Playground since it kind of got released with 18.3, I believe it was, and how many people have been using it. But the new addition is gonna be a simple one. Whereas if you do, you know, let's say you use Image Playgrounds, you add a couple things in here, you do have the ability to now change the style. Originally, we only got two styles. We had animation as well as illustration, but now we do have the style of sketch. So sketch is a new style that you can use to get some different looks and some different kind of feel from a genre standpoint. And then anywhere the Image Playgrounds is accessible, you'll be able to add this new sketch profile wherever Image Playgrounds is accessible, like I mentioned earlier. So that is what's new with Image Playground. And like I said, comment down below if you actually use this thing. The next one is going to be for iPadOS and macOS users. And that's gonna be that Apple finally gave us the new and redone mail application. iOS 18 brought the mail application, or I believe it was 18.1 brought the mail application to iOS, but now it's here on iPadOS. So it is broken down into four different categories between primary, transactions, updates, as well as promotions. And you get to kind of go through them like this. I don't really use Apple Mail. I use Gmail as my main mail client and my mail application on my iPhone and everything else. But it is nice that we do have this here and there is some sort of universality across iOS, iPadOS, and now macOS altogether. So that is a new little welcome addition. But the big headliner here has to be with News Plus. So if you are a News Plus subscriber, this is going to be absolutely free or I guess included in what you're paying. And it's not gonna be just a food section because Apple News Plus did have a food section. And just so you are aware that you do need to be a News Plus subscriber or an Apple One subscriber in order to get all this new stuff. So I will leave a link down below if you guys wanna try it out for a month. 
but the new part is going to be recipes. So you get this brand new look, this recipes catalog, which pretty much aggregates all these different blog posts for recipes that are now easily viewable inside of the News Plus application. And again, this is going to foreshadow to a new hardware piece, right? So for instance, if we click on here, this black bass preserved lemon pistachio sauce, this is a beautiful outlook and I can really see how this would kind of play nice with a home pad form factor in your kitchen. And there's a few things that I really love about this. The first one is, of course, you can go into the actual blog post, see exactly what was written, you know, go through this entire piece if you want to. But if you just want to jump into, let's say, the actual ingredient list and really get cooking, you just tap on cook. And this is a beautiful new screen. So you have two different options here. You have your directions and your ingredients, which just gives you all your ingredients in one list right here. So you can get a visualization of what you need. But then also in the directions, you get this kind of Apple Music lyric style kind of ingredient direction list. And what I love about this is that it's very integrated. So the first thing you notice is that there's a difference between non-bold and bold lettering. The bold lettering indicates an ingredient that you're going to be using on this actual step. And then the other piece, you can see that it's all grayed out if you're not on that step. So then the moment you go to step two, you now have this kind of come into the forefront while this is all grayed out down here. And the next best thing is that you can actually use timers that are built into here. So here it says a five to seven minute timer. You tap on here, you can decide if you want five, six or seven minutes, start the timer, and then it's gonna start that timer in real time while you are cooking. And then of course you can go into your control center or your notifications and see that you do have that live activity and that timer going off. And then you do have the ability to save it, so you can add it to your save file. You can also share it amongst other people. And then if you scroll down, you have another look, which again, is totally interactable, the same way that that big visual look was. So you can still use the timers on here. You still see that things are kind of in bold versus unbold. So I do like this new kind of feature and new section of News Plus. It remains yet to be seen how much I'm gonna use it, but again, this is a great HomePad hardware type of inference and foreshadowing for something that's coming probably this year. Another big one that came is going to be in the settings. So if you go into your settings and then go down to where it says notifications, you do see this Apple intelligence section here and now you have a new option called prioritize notifications. So Apple intelligence can show you notifications that may be important in a separate section on the lock screen so you can catch up on what you may have missed. You can still swipe up and view all your notifications. Now this is gonna work very similar to how the notification summaries work, but it's gonna work a little bit better because it's gonna be using Apple intelligence to prioritize things that it thinks it needs to be prioritizing. And it works again, the same way that it would work when you do use the reduce interruption focus mode, where it lets things through that you would wanna see versus things that maybe are in the background that you can see in a later date. So this is gonna be good, and this is off by default, so I definitely recommend turning this on. And then a few more smaller tweaks that we did notice. For instance, if you go anywhere where there is a keyboard and you go in here and you say show keyboard, you now have a Genmoji option when you go to your emojis. Now this Genmoji option was there before, but now it's fully spelled out to make it a little bit more obvious for people that didn't know what was going on there. The second small change that we noticed was in control center as well. In the focus mode, you now have an up and down arrow, which lets people indicate that there are gonna be multiple options inside of this button right here, which maybe it wasn't that obvious for other people. So that was a nice little addition. Uh, a little Easter egg thing here that we notice is that when you do put the volume up, it goes blue. When you bring the volume down, it actually turns the icon white. And same thing goes with brightness. Right now you can see that it's yellow. If you bring it all the way down below, it's gonna be a white icon, which is hard to illustrate when you are dealing with brightness levels. And then lastly, in the photos application, if you click on your albums, you now have the ability to change the view of list view versus key photo view. So you have this list view, which has been around. Then you have the key photo view, which is right here. And you also have some other filtering options. And then last but not least, there is a new guest user mode in Vision OS and Vision Pro, where it allows you to use your iPad to give you almost kind of like a guided access situation, where you allow people to have certain applications and certain experiences when you are letting them use your Vision Pro. And you do get this kind of demo view and demo mode on your iPad to see A, what they're doing, B, what they're looking at, and then see any restrictions that you have for them during this guest mode. And then last but not least, I do wanna show off the battery life to see how we've been doing because my M4 iPad Pro has been doing relatively well overall with its battery life. So for instance, on a day like Wednesday, we had three hours and 45 minutes of screen on time, and that took up only about 30% battery, meaning we could easily get 10 hours of battery life on a day like yesterday, or again, a day like Wednesday where we did six hours and seven minutes of screen on time, and we only used up about 80% battery, meaning we can get to eight to nine hours, and again, I'm using very intensive task applications like LumaFusion, Affinity Photo, you know, I'm rendering footage, I'm exporting stuff. If I were just to sit and watch videos all day and scroll through Safari and maybe go through social media, then I could easily get 10 to 12 hours out of my M4 iPad Pro. But that's gonna do it for this update and this follow-up. As you saw, a lot of quality of life updates and some newbies that I think are gonna be pretty beneficial to a lot of people.
So as you saw, there were a bunch of new features to take advantage of when it comes to iPadOS 18.4 beta 1 specifically, but I think the bigger story here is that Apple is kind of foreshadowing a new piece of hardware, which I think is some sort of home pad situation, right? Things like that lyrical mode with the recipes that are going to be very beneficial for something like a kitchen device that just sits in your kitchen at all times. Same with the built-in timers and being able to visualize it with big, bold fonts. And also things like that ambient music player that can just be played no matter what from your control center. So again, this is going to be a big foreshadow into maybe some new hardware that's coming out. It's going to be very specific to you, the home and home kit, the home pod, the home pad, an iPad and home pod combination that remains yet to be seen. But I do think it is going to be coming and it's going to be coming this year. So leave a comment down below what you think. Are you excited for a new kind of home pad situation? Did you like the new improvements to iPad OS 18.4 beta one, like the new mail application, the new recipe section in news plus? Let me know. I'm always curious to know, but if you made it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below. So I know you made it to the end and definitely consider subscribing to the channel if you enjoy videos like this one, but that'll do it. If you want to watch more videos like this, definitely check out one of these videos right here. And until next time, I'm Fernando. Peace everybody.